Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for being here today. I am really, really glad to be here with you. So my plan is to share my story with you, and um, I actually don't have a lot of time, but so I'm going to share my story, and then I'm going to dance for you. Uh, so I was born with partial limbs in Tacoma, Washington, and I am very thankful that I was adopted at birth. Um, my parents, my biological parents, knew that they didn't have the resources to provide what I needed, and uh, my adopted parents had uh, just felt called to uh, raise children who had special needs. So I'm not the only one that was adopted. I have five siblings, uh, two have Down syndrome, and the th three youngest have cerebral palsy, and we were all adopted. And I always say on my parents' good luck charm because uh, they adopted my older brother, Jeff, and then they adopted me, and they had my sister, my, well, my brother Andrew and my sister Rebecca right after they adopted me, after they'd been trying for a very long time to have children, naturally. So um, the, the great thing that they did for me is that they advocated for my education and they nurtured my gifts and talents. And so I think uh, one of the blessings uh, that came from them adopting me was that there wasn't any guilt uh, in, in the parenting with me. Um, because they had given birth to me. So they just pushed me uh, to be independent, to go beyond my limits, and to be confident in who I am and what I have to offer the world. And one of the best things they did for me is they recognized uh, early on that I was kind of a little diva. <laughs> Even as a small child. And so... They um, started me in voice lessons when I was six years old because I love singing. Um, and they got me involved in anything that had to do with being on stage. I grew up in a small little farm town. So I did the local talent show every year. When I got into middle school and high school, I sang in choir and I did solos and um, I did theater and musical theater. And so I was on stage a lot, and that helped me build my confidence, and it helped me recognize my gifts and talents and what I had to offer the world. They also recognized my propensity for public speaking when I was about four years old, and they took me and my siblings to a rodeo, and all of a sudden I was missing. And I had escaped my wheelchair and hopped away from them when they weren't looking and had found the announcer on the microphone and said, I want to talk on the microphone. And so all of a sudden they hear me over the loudspeaker um, and they, I had talked the uh, announcer into letting me talk on the microphone and he was telling me what to say. And the things that, uh, what my parents were surprised about is I didn't sound like a four-year-old. They said I sounded like a grown-up. Um, and I didn't do the baby talk thing, and so uh, my dad was just like, okay, she has a future in public speaking, and kind of always reminded me of that growing up. And I really, that uh, desire came into full bloom in about middle school, when uh, motivational speakers started coming into the school, and, and I said, you know what, that's what I want to do when I grow up. And um, so when I went off to college, to Pacific Lutheran University, I had a really wonderful experience, um, the opportunity to get a great education from a private university. I studied psychology, and I minored in vocal performance, um, and just kept that dream alive. But one of the greatest things that happened in that time was I experienced so much encouragement. Um, I experienced being built up. I experienced true friendship. I experienced true mentorship. And through those years, uh, the, those goals of being a public speaker and a performer really started to come alive for me. Um, and I'm just really thankful for that positive experience. And through that experience, I've really learned to understand the power of words and the power of encouragement. Um, because words really have metaphysical power. Um, there are things that people said uh, I've experienced word, the power of words in both the bad and the good. Um, I did experience being teased growing up. 
and just kind of the effects that that had on my self-esteem. And, but then when I went to PLU, that was kind of reversed because I experienced so much positivity. And, uh, and so that's where I started my anti-bullying campaign, was just through my own experience with the power of words, the power of encouragement and acceptance. And so through my experience at PLU, I was very built up and it really laid a good foundation of confidence for me to go out into the world and do what I wanted to do. And so I can't say that it was an easy road. There were times that, especially in my early 20s, that I felt like, am I ever going to get out of school? I, I, I got a master's degree in counseling, and I was in school till I was 29. Um, and so it, there was, during that time, um, I was working part-time and just kind of living in a bachelorette pad and just trying to get by financially while I was going to school. And I just remember there was just a lot of chaos in my life. There was a lot of relationship tension. I don't know if any of you have lived with more than one, one woman under the same roof. <laughs> it is crazy. <laughs> um, and I'm very sensitive. And so at that time of my life was pretty tumultuous at times. And I just remember taking a walk one day. And I was just kind of disgruntled. And I felt like I was just hitting this wall. and. Um, and I just was, and I remember thinking like, what if, like, what if this is all futile? You know, I kind of had that moment in my mind. And I just thought to myself, you know what? I'm not going to give up until I get where I want to be. Like, I just kind of just had this moment where I was stubborn and I said, right now I don't see it on the horizon. I don't see anything. I felt invisible. I felt frustrated. Um, I felt kind of just uh, covered in chaos and emotional stress and I just remember saying you know what though I'm not going to stop until I get where I want to be and it, that was in probably about 2006 and so I got my master's degree in 2009 and shortly after I, I uh, just became an independent contractor and I started working in the school district in Tacoma where I live and that was a great experience it really started me off on a good foot to start my motivational speaking business so basically they hired me as a consultant and I did a lot of uh, like career counseling with, with, within the schools. Um, I, I was a proponent of the inclusion model of education in Tacoma. Um, so I would go to schools and I would present the inclusion model of education. And I spoke, in, uh, I spoke to student body leadership and things like that. And so in 2011, I started my motivational speaking business because it just felt like it was time even though we were in the middle of an uh, economic crisis and I knew it was a huge risk, it just felt like it was time. And so I stepped out with very little to step out into except just faith and hope that something was gonna meet me there. I, my sister and I built a website, I ordered business cards and I started making calls to the local school. And that was how my motivational speaking business started. It took off right away. Um, I started speaking in schools with my anti-bullying campaign, and I sort of just built on that for a couple years, and then I ran for Miss Wheelchair Washington, um, which kind of just kept coming to me. I kept meeting the reigning Miss Wheelchair Washingtons through various friends and events, and it just felt like 2013 was my year. I ran, won that title through my anti-bullying campaign, and then traveled all over Washington State for about four months and then ran for Miss Wheelchair America. I won that title and now I get to travel the nation. <laughs> and really, I'm sitting in front of you, my dreams have come true. There's still way more. Um, I, I have a book that's published. I am an artist and so I, pr I have printed out my art and I sell that as I travel. Um, and I have another book that's at the publishers right now called Discovering Your Identity. And it's all about my own experience with discovering my identity through my life. Um, and it takes young people on a journey. Um, there's like a workbook part of it where they have questions to journal and contemplate. And I'm really excited that should be published by the end of the summer. Um, and I'm also going to start working on a, a travel guide for people who use wheelchairs. So that will be my next book. Yeah. Because I've learned how to travel this year. Um, I've learned all the do's and don'ts and all the resources that are available in America. 
for people with disabilities to travel. So uh, I'm really happy. I'm sorry I'm kind of rushing through my story a little bit because I want to be able to dance for you and still greet you afterwards and get to my taxi at my 12.45. So thank you for version. Um, but I just want to encourage you. Um, I see that most of the people in this room are therapists, right? And maybe a couple patients from the rehab hospital. But really, um, I believe that, that our limitations are just a challenge to get through, not something that's meant to stop us in life. And I know that I push past my limitations. Sometimes I have felt like I'm about to snap just trying to push the boundaries and go past fear. But one of the things that I have learned through this year is that when you take risks, calculated risks that you know that you've thought through, not ridiculous risks, but <laughs> I've taken some good calculated risks and it's always paid off. Um, and I have overcome so much fear this year. I barely had traveled before I got the national title and now I've been in about 20 cities in the U.S. I've been to every part of the U.S. including Hawaii. I've been adaptive surfing and adaptive skiing and I've just figured out how to take airplanes and taxis and figured out which hotels are accessible, which ones aren't, and just kind of the, the ropes of getting around in the world. And I am living the adventure I always hoped I would. Um, I'm actually, I have family here in Santa Barbara and last night we had a great time hanging out and I just thought, I was just sitting there like enjoying their company and thinking like, I never would have imagined that I could travel around independently and just you know meet friends and family on the way and have this amazing adventure with so much support and love along the way. And so I'm really happy. My next big dream is to be a network television talk show host. So that's something I'm working towards. It's something I'm gonna really start focusing on after I pass on my crown in August. And uh, I just hope that my story has inspired you um, the patients and the, the therapists in the room, that uh, everyone has gifts and talents, which I'm gonna demonstrate mine here in a couple seconds, and everyone has something inside of them, a strength, um, something, a, a propensity, the, a, a, an interest, something that just makes them come alive. And when you tap into that, that's what pushes everyone beyond your, their limitations. And so, that's the thought I want to leave you with. I'm going to duck out for just 10 seconds and get ready for my dance. Um, I And this dance is called Walk on Water by Brit Nicole. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the song. And I just love this song because it basically encompasses my story and my platform. And uh, I will be dancing in and out of my wheelchair. So don't be too shocked when I hop out of my chair. Um, or be shocked, that's fine too. <laughs> I like kind of, I like pe when people are like, whoa, what is she doing? <laughs> um, and uh, I choreographed this dance myself. So I'll be back in a few seconds. 